What's up, everybody? We're about to start. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I am here with little geek 88 if you don't know who little geek 88 little geek 88 is a streamer himself as well as a 3d printer enthusiastist and stuff like that so that's really cool um so let little geek 88 introduce himself hello hello you can hear me right no no you can't no no i hear you oh, okay Okay. Uh, yeah, hi. I'm Little Geek 88. Um, I usually stream about three times a week, and I do a whole bunch of different things. I've uh, been playing some very classic games, rather, uh, lately. Um, we've been doing Bioshock and just going through series after series, honestly. When I, before my hiatus, we were doing um, the story of Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn. So I'd like to finish No that. spoilers, because I still haven't played it yet. And Savant has got me that no. game, and he still texts me till this day why I have not played that game yet. I have it no, on Steam. I, do, I am enjoying it, though. There's something about killing robotic dinosaurs that's really fun. Robotic dinosaurs. <laughs> also, hello, Justina. Hello, Meester. Hello, Omar. Welcome to the stream. So happy to have you here. Um, it's an awesome game. I gotta play it. I'm I'm right now stuck you at do. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. We're not gonna talk about that. Um, <laughs> but speaking about video games, how old were you when you started playing video games? How old was I when I started playing video games? That's a good question. Um, well, I started to. No, I did not, Omar. I did not do the DLC yet. Um, I started with a Sega Genesis. Me that too! was given to me by a family member. I started with the Sega Genesis, but it wasn't mine. My first ever gaming console was the N64. But what was your first game on the Sega Genesis? Uh, Sonic. Oh, my first Sonic game. My first game on the Sega Genesis was a putt putt game. It was like a mini golf game, and there was like a hamburger, and then there was like a windmill. It was it was really weird. I forgot the name of it. I had to find it. But that was my first game. It was the mini putt putt game, then Sonic, then Pocahontas, which is really hard, by the way, and then Lion King. I um my parents never really got me video games when I was younger. Did they feel like it poisons so... your mind? No, it, just that they were, you know, of an older generation. It wasn't their thing. They didn't really understand it. So it was like, well, yeah, but, you know, so. I understand that. But eventually that. someone, someone gave, a, gave me uh, their, one of my family members, I don't know how I came to be, but I got their Sega Genesis and I was playing, I played that. And then um, when the first PlayStation, the the rectangular gray one came out, with the CDs. That was like my, my first console ever. That is and really I played, neat. Um, I played, yeah, I got it, I got it for, um, I think for my birthday. Ooh. I got it for my birthday. My mom bought it for me. My dad, my mom and my dad. That's so fun. And Hi, then, Panda. Um, and then it was, um, well, we're not spending money on games. That's expensive. I'm like, yeah, but it's a game. Well, what if you don't like the game? I'm like, well, that's I'm, what? Like, so we went to this um, big store that some people may not understand what it is anymore because of what year it is, but it was a blockbuster. <laughs> and they would rent me games. Yo, renting was game was such a move because even though there there's no blockbuster anymore, there's this service called Gamefly where you could actually mm -hmm. rent games and still borrow them. And people still use it till this day because it's true. People oh, yeah. don't like games and they play a little bit for a bit. Like I have games in there catching dust that I haven't touched or maybe I played it once and never touch again. And the Game Pass, if you think about it, the Xbox Game Pass, you're technically renting the game because you download the game. And if the game is mm -hmm. removed from the Game Pass and you don't own that game, that game is completely gone. It's back. So the only difference between Gamefly though and like Blockbuster was that you had three days. 
Blockbuster had three days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, GameFly, you have like a week or two or whenever you want to return it. I think, yeah, it's whenever you want to return it within a certain time limit. I think it's like a year or something. It is a year, yeah. Yeah. But like at Blockbuster, it was like $10, $10 $15 or something, I want to say. And you only had three days. And That's then you'd like have to demo. either bring it back and renew it or you could buy it to own it too. It else. Or you could buy it to own it yeah. as well. I found yeah, out you, that you could buy out. stuff from Blockbuster, like video games and movies. Like that was like a new thing they added though. Th that wasn't always a thing. It was only renting, but then they no. added that they wanted you to buy them because they noticed how mm -hmm. like a lot of merchandise was stolen. <laughs> Be kind of rewind. Was... No, they used to replace the VCRs movies with another VCR mm -hmm. movie when they return it. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that was a big that was a big thing. And then they're like, okay, instead of whatever, if you're late, if you don't pay the late fee, you end up buying full price to own it. Now let's not talk about the whole Divix thing either, because that was a pain in the ass. The what? Divix. Do you remember that? What's Divix? D V D V D I V X. It was um, when DVDs first came out, they were trying this rental format, and it was called Divix. I never heard of oh, it. Oh, God, no. It's Zachary Meester. And, uh, what, well, the way that it works was, you, you know that discs work with a laser, right? Obviously. Yeah. So, I'm, hey, some people may not know. But um, the way that it worked was, when you read the disc in your machine, your DVD player. Uh-huh. It would actually activate this special ink that was in the disc, and then it would be timed. So after so many hours, or like 24 hours, the disc would be destroyed on its own. They purposely so destroyed you... the disc so you can't... Wait, what? Yep. So you would rent a movie, say, for $8, and you would get it for 24 hours, and in about 23 hours or something, the ink inside the disc would die. It would actually... De decomposite itself so that it couldn't be read as a DVD anymore. So you only had 24 hours to watch the disc. So once once you opened the package and put it in the player, you had 24 hours to read that disc. Because after that, the disc wouldn't work anymore. It just became a plastic frisbee. Yo, Divix is evil. Yep. Well, it's because, like you said, people were not returning them. Yeah, of course. That's a smart way of doing it, but that's evil. Like, I know there's this thing called, um, is it Redbox? I don't know. It's it's like at 7-Elevens, mm -hmm. and they still have it. Yeah, Redbox and, is one of them. And you have, like, I think, I don't know how many days you have to return it, but you use the machine. Mm -hmm. Like, how do they maintain that? That's so weird. Do they have, like, people drive and then drop off the movies? I'm like, okay, new load. Yeah. Oh, that's... yep. So it's like a vending machine of movies. It is like a vending machine. Yeah, they they refill oh. it with um, all the DVDs in a red box are on scheduled. I'm a complete so, moron. Like, at, a, at, at a certain point, there's a person there that has to open the machine up, take all the old ones out, and put all the new ones in. Uh huh. Which is quite an interesting thing to watch. Let me tell you, I caught the guy at the dollar store the one day down the road, and he was reloading that red box. The machine is pretty interesting how it works. Ah. Huh. That's why they're in those special red box cases, though, because they have some kind of um, NF NFC tag in them or something. That's why they have the arrow on the top. They have to go one way because the machine reads the tag when you put it in there. And somehow I think they use special discs because when you put if you put I had someone put the wrong disc in. They said they tried it. And they said it wouldn't accept it. So somehow they're reading the disc as well. Oh, when you return but, it? Mm-hmm. That's smart. There's, I think there's an NFT, NFC tag or something built into their discs. See, so what inspired you to name yourself Little Geek 88? And But wait, before you answer that question, let me, let's go backtrack. When did you start streaming specifically on Twitch? When did I start streaming on Twitch? Yeah, that when? That's an excellent question. Let me think. Um, I could just... I, I won't have an exact date for I you. I could stock but, it. Give me a second. Um, I've been registered on on this site, Twitch or Justin TV, however you want to label it, for nine years. Hold on. I could tell you exactly what date. Give me a second. So if you didn't know, you could stalk people by using TwitchTracker.com, everybody. <laughs> cool. So... If 
she likes to you, do multiple places at once. You, you could use uh, chatting. You created your account on April 13th, 2014. Mm-hmm. That sounds about right. That was way before me. So yeah, if you didn't know, you could use yeah. twitchtracker.com as a good way to use your analytics and stuff. But Twitch actually advanced the creator portal to look at more analytics and look at what the best type of games and what type of content you want to put out on streaming. So Twitch is actually giving, it deserves an applause for listening to us sometimes. But yeah, that's that's really neat. So what inspired yeah, the so Little Geek 88 name? <laughs> That's a long time. Years ago, right? Yeah, I haven't been on Twitch that long. I only been on here for no, three years. years. Wait, actually, that's no. When did I? I'm curious. When did I make my account? I think I made my account before you. Let's see. Probably. Because I used to. I never streamed on Twitch. I made an account just to watch people. I was like a literal sh viewer. Oh, I was yes. a viewer. A that's viewer. What I, yeah, I started as a viewer as well. I think it was like, what is this Justin.tv thing I keep reading about on Reddit? Okay, so you made your account at 2014. I made my account at May 30th, 2018. And I was a, a okay. viewer because I, I didn't stream on Twitch until 2020 during the pandemic. Yeah, I don't think I could even b begin to have started streaming until probably 18 or 19. Okay. Maybe even 20 remembering my internet history because i did i had i had dial up for the longest time i don't think it's possible to stream with dial up if it is that's no okay i thought no. so I I had, that, that's what i'm saying i had dial up so there's no way i was streaming okay makes sense okay so let's go back to my question once again what came GTA thing um yep, that name why okay so obviously the 88 well, I hope the 88 is, is obvious. The year you were That's born? The year I was, yes. Oh, yes. okay. Unless you're like, unless you're like rock star or something, and then you think it's something that's not so nice. Um, and then I have to put the underscore in between the two eights. But, okay. Um, and I'm not going to explain it. You guys look it up if you want to know. Um but then I was uh, the little geek. The little geek part came over because um, everyone did call me a geek in school all the time, so I kind of just went with it. And then I said, "Well, I need a name." So I picked the most contradictional thing in the in, like, that I could think of is that is little, because I'm such a big human. And like, there's a little John in Robin Hood. And you think, well, little John, he can't be that that bad of a guy, right? He's a little John, so like, why not a little geek? Wait, how tall are you? I'm six one. Oh wow, you're tall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hence the name of the little and being tall. That's definitely contradicting itself. Yeah, well, it's like I said, it's like little John. Everyone the, calls the little irony. John, little John. It's you know he was not a little person. So. It kind of like uh, takes you back too, because it's like, oh, little geek. He can't. He he's a little bit of a geek, maybe. Okay, but, that makes you know, sense. No, that's, that's cool though. That's the, I'm not a little geek though. I'm quite a big geek. Oh, uh, I could see in, that. In. No, I I could see that. That's that's definitely an observation I've got a long time ago. But, um, I like the fact how you use something negative and put it towards like yourself as a brand do you think you'll ever rebrand in the future and you think you'll be little geek 88 forever uh i've been little geeky i've been i've been little geek something since i was on the internet so it's i've been 20 something years of little geek on the internet i'll probably never rebrand okay that's smart i may have a subsidiary at one point in the future hopefully that would be nice yeah. The way I got LA Gym is a very bizarre story and I just stick with it. And I think I'm going to keep it forever. I'm like working on trademarking it and it's such a hassle mm -hmm. right now at the moment. But yeah, having a brand and using 
that experience to make your brand is a brilliant idea. I love the fact that you use something negative just to make it positive. So I give you lots of props on that. That's really cool. And uh, for cool. you starting Twitch at an early age, around 20, 20 early year, not age, but early year 2014, um, do you see the differences of like the Twitch overlays or everything or does things look similar or you don't barely remember? It's a different landscape, definitely. Everything progresses. Everything progresses. And because technology moves so fast, um, I mean, you, you know firsthand, you get a game and the next thing you know, there's another game. Mm -hmm. And the second game could be totally different than the first game. I and mean, look at the first Halo compared to the second Halo. Two totally different games almost. Same True. characters. Yeah. Same storyline. Yeah. But you you can tell the difference very, very easily. One's still a classic, but and that's the same goes with Twitch, I think. Twitch is Twitch has its legacy, its its history. And you know, it was bought out and it got a rebrand and that happens a lot with companies. But in the beginning, and from what I remember, and it could be totally biased, but it was a lot of just people with cameras. There were no overlays that I remember. You know, I mean, if you had overlays or any kind of like video graphic anything, you had a high end computer. You had lots of money. Oh, yeah. So a I computer don't think, that was yeah. like $300 was considered expensive back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So like if you had if you had stuff like that, if you had any kind of thing that could do video editing on the fly, you had a macho video card or a really big CPU. So there I don't think there are many channels that had that. But mm. I do remember that there were a lot of channels like of people doing things. Maybe playing video maybe maybe it was more like a I'm I'm trying to describe it like a like a TikTok thing now where people have like a camera on a monitor playing a game. Well now they have the beta I, with the thing. Well, but now yeah. they have a studio. But you know, even if you do swipe through TikTok a lot, you will see people with their phone just sitting on a counter. Oh yeah. Uh, on a tripod yeah. and pointing at TV. I think yeah. that's that's how it was on Twitch before, yeah. right? Yeah, that's how it was in the beginning. Yeah, they're like, well, we people, can play games and watch other people watch. That. And I think that's how it progressed. Hey, what's up, Turtle Pizza Power? Turtle Pizza Power is one of the people we'll be interviewing later this month. I, I lost a date, but I'll remember later. <laughs> um, we have to hear Little it, it, Geek 88, who is a streamer, and giving us our knowledge about Blockbuster and stuff like that. Yeah, what's up, Bryn? Another one I'll be interviewing in July. I love it. <laughs> that's so fun so um little geek 88 uh, i'm just gonna call you little geek it's so weird just saying little geek 88 <laughs> i know the 88 does make it weird but someone says that it sounds like i'm calling you an idiot but i'm not <laughs> because if you Depending say 88 the really fast time, they might not be wrong idiot 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 88 88 88 88 <laughs> I could hear it. And like oh, I said, crying. depending on the I'm time sorry. of the day, it, it could it could be true. I could be an idiot. So basically it's, you're calling yourself an idiot. That's fantastic. All right. Um I'm sorry. Well, I did I I really I'm big with the self deprecating humor. So I okay. really did not mean that. Oh, we, we just went over that. We just went over why we just his went name over is that. little geek. It's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. It's a positive He's six yeah, one. A... He's six one. And he says he's little. And... <laughs> What's your favorite it, it, type? It's screw with your mind. What's your favorite genre of video games? My favorite genre of video games. Uh, I think it depends on my mood, because I have two. I have like two or three. If um, I will, I pl I will play Halo any day, any time. So mm -hmm. and I do enjoy FPS a lot. Um, I'm always, I'm almost always down to play FPS. But there are times when I just want to sit and mindlessly swipe at things, mm -hmm. like when you know when you go to bed and stuff. But um, I also enjoy puzzle games. I enjoy puzzles and thinking through things. Um, 
I like to solve and fix problems. Uh, you're playing that cat. You're playing Catherine on um, TikTok, right? No. No. Kick. Mm-hmm. Kick. Uh, I like that one because it seems very puzzly. I actually just that game I, aggravates I watch you play it. me. It aggravates me. But I I got the um. I actually bought it because I watched you play it. You got it. And nice. It really Are you gonna play it? Like you're avail you're allowed to play it on Twitch. I just can't play it on my Twitch channel due to like certain of my yeah. genre and my audiences. Mm -hmm. If you play it, let me know. I want to see you suffer. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Actually, um, I'm glad. I don't. My TV is on the other side of this wall now because okay. I'm in a new place. So my TV's <laughs> over there. But in my original streaming location. My computer is here in front of me. I have a monitor here, a monitor here, and a monitor up there. And then my TV was next to me. So all my consoles were plugged in right here. And then I just plugged them right into my computer. But since they're on the other side, I'll have to get one of my daughter's switch docks and put them over here. I have my, my capture box on my desk. I just haven't Wait, set what it kind of yet, capture box is that? Can I see it? Yes. This is... It's upside down. I can't read upside down. It's a USB 3.0 HD video capture. It is a generic Chinese thing. And how much was it that? 50 bucks. Huh? Works great. I use an Elgato capture card and you, you know the nonsense I go through it every time. So, well, the, the reason I looked at the, it, this is a model number HSV 321 because they're original. Don't know what that means, but okay. Um, it means absolutely nothing, I'm sure. Oh, okay. But um, Riven style puzzle. I started playing. Are you talking about that game from '95, Meester? What game? I, I come Riven. back to the capture card, and then we could talk about Meester. I it just caught my uh, my eye. Um, okay, so this is thing with the way that it works is it like works like any capture card. You plug your HDMI in, you had an HDMI out for your monitor, and then you have a USB three. But the difference between this one is it shows up like a microphone and a camera. So like you plug a USB webcam into your computer and it comes up with a camera and a microphone. This does the exact same thing. So there's no drivers for it. There's no need to set it up. There's no need to do anything. It's just plug and play. And it's a 1080 capture card. So it captures 1080 at 60 frames per second and you're done. Oh, Peace it's, it's Power unique. said, I have the one he has. It's cheap one. I think it's anyway. It's funny. I could hook up Switch or PS3, no problem. Elgato, I needed a splitter. I did it with the cheap mm -hmm. one and issues was sound issues. So Elgato was a choice because of sound issues. No sound issues. But Switch and PS3 have copy protection. So you got to use splitter with the Elgato. Oh, splitter is mm -hmm. only 10 bucks. I have a splitter, but I don't use, and, I don't use voice um, chat. So I will agree with that. I when I first got this, I had an audio problem where I couldn't get audio and I got video, and then all of a sudden I would get audio and not and not get video, and I realized that for it to work, you have to pull the audio first, all the time. Interesting. You have to pull the audio from the card and then get the video. I believe. Don't quote me on that. It might be backwards. Sometimes I do this this thing where I'm dyslexic, but. Um, yeah, you have to pull one before the other, otherwise it wouldn't work. Okay, answer Meester's but, question but it, first, and then answer Justina's it works, question. It works great. Fantastic. Okay. Now, ask about that puzzle uh, game. Yes. Okay. So it is that river. Okay. So ninety in. Uh, I think it was ninety eight. I want to say it was in. It was in the late nineties. There was a game called Riven, and it was, uh, kind of point and click. Have you ever played a point and click puzzle? I play point and click games here, but yeah, well, it just well, it was obviously there was no. I played Carmen San Diego, and that was horrible. So, well, there were no graphics. The graphic there were no graphics cards that were really good. Like we didn't we didn't have thirty eighties, obviously, or anything like that. So yeah, it was a giant pain in the ass. It would just show you this really high rendered picture. And you'd have to click in the direction you want to go or click on the items and, you know, but whatever. But it was located on this uh, on Easter Island. So there were these big uh, Easter Island heads and you had to, like, solve the mystery or something. And I think I 
I played it for like five or six hours. I didn't get that far in it, but I do remember it. And now that he brought it up, I want to play it again. You have to have a notebook and everything in notes. There's a game I play like Mm -hmm. that that I needed a notebook. It's called uh, Delete Before Reading, and I still have to finish it because I never finish games sometimes. Um, I remember the name Riven when it came out, but I never played it. I never played it either. Uh, Justina has a question. What style of games you avoid, but you might want to willing to give a try? What do I avoid? Oh, look, he's stumped. Fortnite. Ugh! Get out. I avoid that like the plague. This interview is over. I would try it. I'd try it, I guess. If I, I have to have a really good incentive. Um, I broke my Zoom I button. I stay away from racing games. I stay away from racing games most of the time. Um, I don't enjoy them. I broke my Zoom button. It's not my cup. You broke your Zoom button. That's not good. Yeah, I'm like zoomed in right now. Interesting. Because I pressed but, the wrong um, button when I was zooming. <laughs> I try to give every game of, of VR racing is fun. I See, I try VR racing. That w- that might be fun. I can't do VR because of my narcolepsy, sadly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my zoom button's um, broken. This, this is no bueno. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would, um, I'd give it a game a try though. I always look around. I like to like read the reviews and watch, you know, Twitch is wonderful for that. Especially like you get all the new games. I always watch because that that looks fun. I'll try that. But, um, no, I don't really have anything I avoid completely. Ali's so dramatic. No, I don't like that game for specific reasons. I play the game. I had a, a Royale. Never touch it again though. And I wasn't streaming when I played the game, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I would never play that game. Is that is that horrible? Yeah, it's... I don't like the idea of building while I'm shooting. Well, they don't have the no build mode anymore. That that that's what that's why I said no. I'm not gonna be building something while. That would have been embarrassing. Okay. I feel like I should bring you a new computer. This is a brand new laptop. I should bring you a desktop. <laughs> I don't think I need a desktop. All right, we're back, Yay, y'all. We're back. I told you it was it was just a minor setback, but it's okay. We good. We good. We. It happens. All right, so we were talking about, um, yeah, we're not going to mention that again, okay? Fortnite broke my stream. (laughs) Someone says, do you remember a DOS game called The Lost in Time? Vaguely. I don't, vaguely. I don't even know what that is. 
DOS games get me. Oh, look, desktop my or laptop. Back. I have a desktop, if you're asking me. I have a um I have a custom built laptop with a custom built case. Um I was also gonna ask you a very important question. Both. What? Yeah. No, are you ready me, for my sir, you... my very important I'm ready, question? I'm ready, hit me. You're hit ready me. for my very, very important question. Mm-hmm. Light mode or dark mode? Dark mode, always. Hey. I had to give you that dramatic white, stare. White is a sin on an LCD display. Oh, it really is. It's definitely so bad for your eyes. I, Some of the programs I use on my computer only have white backgrounds, and I'm like, why, God, why? Like, seriously, like, for work, I have to use light mode all the time for the post-it notes because of the color coding. Because um, if you do dark mode, everything looks the same, and then my notes are all discombobulated and mm. so confusing. And then I don't know which one's which, so it's such a headache. Okay, I got enough for that. Okay, paso. Uh, so, uh, Meester has a desktop or laptop. We know you have a laptop. I do I have, have a laptop. Desktop. Okay. I have a custom built desktop with a custom built case. What do you mean by a custom built case? I built my case. I don't know what that means. Like, not from scratch, but um, I built the majority of my case. Yo, Arcade Revolution. So, Thank you for the 25 bits. No alerts will work during interview streams, by the way. Um, but thank you. I appreciate that. Can we give a shout out to Arcade Revolution? Um, but yeah, Little Geek. Mm-hmm. Meester knows. Meester got it. Oh, you made a case with a 3D printer. Mm-hmm. So yes, that's what I was going to touch upon on. So you do have a 3D printer. Um, what made you into, uh, what interested you into 3D printing? Me? Oh, wow. That's really cool. It's got the, um, Death Star type of wall thing going on. Okay. And then the Imperial symbol. I just repainted it black because I scratched it. But, um, and I'm still technically working on the front panel. But okay. the rest of it's all done. Huh. It it had a different. Um, it's a very big. It's a full ATX case. Thank you, Arcade Re Revolution. I really appreciate that. The next oh, time I am so in live, I'll give you a shout out. The yeah, Arcade Revolution is such a dope person. Um, um, that it had a uh, a door on the front because it used to have uh, five and a half inch drive bays at the top. So like for like big, big the big drives for like CDs and stuff. Mm-hmm. But we don't use those anymore. So I just put a fan in there. And then I uh, 3D printed a whole brand new front panel for it. So I call it my Imperial machine. Because that's the theme. It's in Star Wars Imperial build. I'm playing with my Zoom features. So I'm ready to that. like give you the deaf Some stare. Sure. Fantastic. Okay, uh, <laughs> that's really cool that you made that out of a 3D printer. Can you show us what else you made from your 3D printer? You said you were prepared sure. since early in the morning, so I'm I do. curious. I, I'm prepared, yes. Awesome. Uh, I guess we'll start with something everyone will know. Uh, everyone likes the Nightmare Before Christmas. I do. Yep. So this is a Jack Skellington that I made. <gasps> that's cool. That could be like a, but, uh, you put like an end of a book case and it holds the books together. Mm -hmm. Like what, I forgot what uh, it's called. The one, a uh, book, bookends? Bookends, yeah, yeah, those things, yeah. My, the thing that I try to tell everybody about my 3D prints is that I like functionality mm -hmm. in my prints. It's one thing for you to have a collectible. I like it to have, a, like Adam Savage, I don't know if you know him from Mythbusters. He always says that everything has a story, and I really agree with that. So I like my stuff to form and function. 
So I like it to look good, but I also like it to do stuff. All right. So what does it do? <gasps> it lights up. Okay. That's pretty neat. That's a light bulb, right? Not an actual candle. It is a, um, it's one of those candles you can buy in the store. That's LEDs. Oh, it's an like, LED candle. Oh, like that, uh, like the thing you buy, like in and a I, dollar store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I took the LED out of it. <laughs> uh huh. I, I smashed it and I took the LED out and the battery and all that stuff. So on the bottom, you can change the, the battery and stuff. Oh, wow. And then, um, I 3D printed an extra, I, I modified the base so that it fits it, but he's not totally finished either. He looks great, I think, but he still needs his pinstriping and he needs his uh, mouth and stuff, but it looks I don't pretty have, good. Um, so that's this, it, this is one of my favorite models. It really is. All right. Someone asks, uh, we, how hard is it to use a 3d printer? Arcade revolution asked. Uh, let's see. Um, if you've never done it before in your entire life, it's going to be one hell of a learning curve. After you've done it and you're getting used to it, you're still going to have some learning to do. Every single time I print something on my printer, I learn something new about the process. So, well, also the technology is always advancing too. The program that we use to make the models go to the printer is always evolving. They're always adding new features. So the way that the model prints is always changing. The base structure is the same, but you know, sometimes they'll program the printer in the background in the code that it uses to do things a little bit differently. So instead of going left to right in some areas, it might go right to left. Instead of using a layer height that's this big, it might use a layer height this big to say filament, which is the plastic that it it prints with there's a whole bunch of different technological things that just keep advancing but um the basics of it are pretty simple you find a model you throw it into a slicer which is the program we use and uh it takes a model and literally slices that model into layers that are horizontal that are the same same height so um jack was uh actually jack wasn't printed that's i'll get to that in a moment but like the rest of that model was printed at 0 0.2 millimeter which is smaller than a human hair honestly it's it's very thin and uh yeah just layer after layer after layer and before you know it you get you get something off the printer um i modeled this this thing it just looks like a block what is it, it? basically is it's basically just a block, but it's for a project I'm working on right now, and I'm gonna make a video about it. I think I'm making a um a a, a fountain, a dog fountain, for my for my for the pup dog, uh, so she can drink from it. Oh. I haven't gone with the. I I wanted to make it like death metally and do like skulls and stuff, but I'm kind of leaning away from that now. I but, like that. Uh, I like the it, pink color. Yeah, but uh, so this holds uh, a water block. So water goes in one side of the block and comes out the other. And uh, there's a thing called a thermocouple in the middle. It's a little ceramic disc that's like one side gets cold and the other side gets hot. And then it goes to this heat sink, which is in another thing. And then these two sandwich together. So it gets uh, warm water goes in. Uh, hot, uh, cold water comes out and then it'll go to the um, reservoir that I have over there uh, and then it'll go into her bowl and it you know because you can get water fountain bowls for dogs but this one will also cool the water and um, I have a bunch of uh, filters on it I'm putting so that it can filter the water and stuff that's really cool does that and actually exist or um do you think you could actually um, make that and invest it in like a Shark Tank episode? I think people would invest in it. Yeah. But I'm saying that doesn't exist yet. That you could actually invest that and pitch that to a Shark Tank episode. I'm sure they have one. I don't know. Do your research and maybe try to pitch it in. That's pretty I'll dope. I'll have to look. I'll have to look for it. But, uh, I mean, because it cools the water, it keeps the water moving, and it puts it through two different filters. 
Because the worst thing in the world is when a dog drinks from a bowl and the water's stale and it gets that like slimy junk in it. Uh huh. I, I hate it. Oh, that makes sense. And then the dog doesn't want to drink from the bowl either because she's like, well, I don't want to drink that water. It's your water. Spoiled. Savantha's hi. Oh. Yumi says, will you make Hi, me Samantha. a Princess Layla case? I'll pay you in Oreos. <laughs> that, that's a hard button to turn down, too, because I just demolished a half a case of Oreos. That was, that <laughs> was, that was tempting. That's tempting. Yeah, Oreos are awesome. That's my, one of my favorite cookies. Next to Ships Ahoy. Uh, I, will do custom, I will do custom requests. Uh, if you message me on my Etsy store, I will prob I, I'll take a look at it and... I'll, I'll do custom requests. Is your SC store in world. your website? Uh, yeah, it's on my website, littlegeekidiot.com. So go check but out that also, website. If you, are on, if you are on Etsy, it's Ritopo Mart. R-I-T-O-P-O-M-A-R-T. It'll say I'm on vacation because I did move and I did, didn't want orders coming in with my printer, like over there and over here. And then my tools are over there. Like I'm not organized. So, so other than that. But um Hi Savantha. Yeah, I'm always up to do custom I'm always up to doing custom stuff. Um I have custom keychains I've made for people in Australia. What other stuff you want to show us from your 3D printer before we continue on my questions? Um oh yeah, okay. Um well I showed you Jack, that's one thing. I have this control panel that I was making. It's gonna from my blue screen, but it's got a bunch of relays right here. But uh, I made this control panel. It's uh, for heating and cooling systems. Uh, I was making some artwork for my Twitch set. I love that. What is that? It's just the Twitch logo. I want one. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll, I'll bring you this one on uh, on Sunday then. Maybe you're actually going on Sunday, right? Yeah. You're not lying. I already rented a car. Oh, Beth, that's so dope. Uh, my original thing on Etsy were these things. That's for a Switch? This is for the Nintendo Switch, yes. And what does that do? This holds the Joy-Con handles. And where would you put that? The little, the little strappy things that yeah, go on I the Joy-Cons the when you take them off. Joy-Con is. I have one, yeah. Well, no, well, you take the Joy-Con off, and then it has the little straps that you click on. Yeah, I have... The straps somewhere. Yeah, I lose those damn things all the damn time. Okay. Oh, so that's and, for and the so straps? My kids. my kids love to lose those things. Uh-huh. So I designed this thing. Okay. And what you do is you take those little handle things and you slip them on here. Oh. And then you can take this with you and you'll never lose them again. That is so smart. And because it's flat on the back, you can put double stick tape, throw this on the wall. You can have one, just throw it in your backpack. Take it with you. Watch it. Nintendo um, might steal that idea and start selling it. So uh, it's on my Etsy store. I've never seen that in Nintendo. So watch it. I actually did pitch this to Nintendo. You did. Mm -hmm. And they rejected I've it. I never heard back yet. Oh, okay. I've never heard sense. back yet. I think that's a great idea. They probably want you to lose them because those things are twenty dollars a piece. <laughs> that's true. But then they could sell that for like forty-five bucks. Uh, I sell it for twenty five, I think. Oh, okay. I'm t I'm saying Nintendo price wise. Oh yeah. Um, I do. Have, I like. I love. I love characters from shows too. So. Okay. I have Patrick. Oh my God! It's Patrick. Wait closer. He's got his little hammer. Bring him closer. All right, back him up a little bit. Oh my God! It is Patrick. Oh, it's like uh, a. It's. It's the episode where they were building some building SpongeBob's house, I think. Okay. And he nailed the board to his den. <laughs> Cuz it's Patrick, why not? Oh, okay. So I have that one. Um I was in the middle before I moved, I was making a Gandalf the White staff. The Witcher? No, Gandalf the White from Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. Mhm. Mm and um again i like things that do stuff okay so, so what does um, this do so i'll have a battery pack and i'll plug this guy into it this is just like a tester guy for leds and it also lights up 
You I really like l- things that light up. I'm surprised you don't have I an RGB setup. Do, do you have stuff. an RGB setup? Uh, no, not at the moment. Okay, you're not bougie like me then. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so you hook them up, and uh, it will do stuff. I don't know where my my gator clips went. They were just here. I probably moved them. Or they're in front of me. That happens a lot, too. I don't know. They're here somewhere. But uh, this is printed in clear plastic in the middle. Mm-hmm. And there's two strips of LEDs in it. Okay. So um, when I when it's all together, you'll be able to like hit it on the ground, and it'll turn on real bright and white like he does in the movie. Can we see? Yeah. I, I'm trying to find my, uh, what you call it? I know I just had them. You were ready since 8 a.m. Come on, chop, chop. Don't slack. Well, I'm kidding. Goodness gracious. Uh, no, 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 it never happens. It always happens. You, you, you prepare all day and then you forget the most important thing. Story of my life. I'll just twist, I'll just twist the wires together. It'll do the same thing, you know? Yeah. Oh, you want to know why it's not going to work? This is not that broken. That's broken. All right, it's okay. But you tried. It's okay. We'll move on. In fact, uh, and you want to talk about LEDs? The light that's above me right now. Mm-hmm. I don't. You probably can't see it yet. But, no. Um. I think if I go like this, I can. That light that's up there. Hey, I see you. That, yeah. That light that's right here. Uh-huh. That is a 3D printed lamp. Wait, what? That is a 3D printed lamp. Interesting. Yeah. I made that. I need. I wanted a light that was, I wanted like a bar light to go over my desk. And I'm like, I can't find one. I'm like, forget about it. I'll just make one. So I did. I took some PVC pipe and some uh, aluminum uh, angle brackets, and I made myself a light. Your green screen I got just, a little messed up. Fix your blue screen. Did it? Oh. There we go. Don't look behind the curtain. So, uh... Um, no attention to the man behind the curtain. Can you make, like, uh, utensils and furniture out of the 3D printer, and would you use it? Uh, yeah, you can. There's oh. a lot of people online who have. But uh, also, uh, you know who's made some, made a tool with a 3D printer? No. N- NASA. The rocket people? NASA has a 3D printer on the International Space Station, and they emailed, emailed, like literally to the International Space Station, emailed a three-inch pound wrench. And they 3D printed a tool on the International Space Station. And I have the file because it is a public available file. I have it and I did print it. It's a little wrench about this big. You can stick sockets on it. It, it actually ratchets. It's amazingly designed. And it prints all in one piece, which is really cool. Have you ever thought of like having like a 3D geek show on your stream? Like literally talk about this stuff? Because this is actually really interesting. Um, well, I do do 3D printed stuff on my stream a lot. Um, no, but I actually, like, have, like, of them and... talking about it when, because, like, like, it's very informative. In Who's this guy? This guy is uh, a bobblehead from Fallout. He's blue, so he'll, he'll disappear, but the little bobblehead from Fallout. Oh. I actually have the whole set. I want to build, I want to 3D print the whole set. And then uh, I love Futurama, so I have Professor Farnsworth. Is he blue too? No, I why? think that's just why he looks I think like that's a ghost. A reflection thing. Yeah, he does. Oh, it's because he's gray. <laughs> he's probably near the spectrum. Ah, okay, Futurama. And what else? Mm-hmm. Um. So he's a head in the jar. Um, I'm a hu- I am I was huge into Destiny. So I have a a ghost. He comes three different parts. 
And this was my demo ghost because I was actually making a robotic one. So it would actually move and stuff on its own. And I was hoping to get it to float. Uh, and I do a lot of masks. I like masks. So you watch anime, right? Yeah. Do you know this one? Anybody in the chat know this one? Who is it? Can I buy a vowel? <laughs> well, I think Meads just said he knows. Bleach. Oh, it's Bleach? Yeah. yeah, I don't like Bleach, mm -hmm. so never mind. I have the mask. Okay, the, the mask. Movie. Oh, that's cool. That's the Jim Carrey one. Mm-hmm. I like this one. Jim Carrey is one of my favorite actors, too. So, And then, of course, I love Star Wars. We all know I love Star Wars. So I got one of those little oh, screeching guys. Oh, so cute. Um, I'm going to go through them really quick. It's the doorknob from uh, Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. We just finished watching that, by the way. Alice in Wonderland. Oh, Alice in Wonderland. I totally knew that. That's Zach's favorite movie. I have, this one's really cool, too. It's a brain. This is a real brain. Wait, what? This is a real brain. How is it a real brain? Because this model is of a 3D uh, MRI of someone's actual brain. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's not an actual brain, but it's an MRI of an actual brain it's figurine an, that an symbolizes MRI of an actual oh, okay. brain. So it's but it's not real. Of course, no, no. I don't I don't have that kind of money. And then I made a custom face and uh of course you know this lights up too. <laughs> oh my gosh. You should have your own this lamp. Is a lamp. You should have your own this customizable lamp. lamp store or something. Everything's with this lights. This is a lamp. This is a lamp. Uh, each hemisphere of the brain does light up independent. It does patterns. It does colors. And I did program this one so that if you want to know a specific part of the brain, like the prefrontal cortex or, uh, well, we don't actually have the cerebellum here, but uh, you can do the cerebrum. You can actually say to Siri or to her who should not be named, um, what part of the brain on the lamp and it will light it up dude why you never pitch these things to like educators or something like they could use this in school and this also has this little this little disc here this is for a phone charger you can drop your phone on here it will charge your phone no like colleges and high schools could use that like why you never pitch that idea I'm just... dude can i like can I get like a chancleta and hit you in the head? Like you have no idea mm -hmm. how much. I do have uh, I do have two buttons on here too, so you can change the brightness and the uh, ones for brightness, and ones for mode. So you can do like rainbow, green, purple, any color you want. And like I said, it also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, so you can put it on your network and control it from your phone. You have no idea what you made and how impactful yeah, i don't i don't you really don't you you don't know how impactful I've, that could be in the education are just normal things to me these are just creations that i like i mean i am terrible at the business part of it and this is why you need a business manager or something i do i need a business manager i need someone to be like oh yeah that's worth 75 dollars an hour and then give it to someone because I can't do it. But um, actually, the first thing that started my Etsy store was a Reddit post on our Futurama because I printed this little guy. That's a cute. Does it light up too? No, it's just a light. <laughs> okay. But um, I was stupid. And this is one of those things where you make a mistake and you learn. Uh, I was stupid. I did not understand how Etsy worked. And I said that I only had one. I should have set it to like 200. Because the first one sold out to this, to this person in Hawaii. And the, re the listing never renewed. If I would have renewed it, 
I would have sold almost 1,300 of them in 24 hours. But you learn. Trial and error, buddy. Uh, mm-hmm. But if I would have had the, the listing auto renew, I, I could have had 1,300 of them sold. Uh, and the cool thing about 3D printing is not that you just print in plastic, but you can print in exotic materials. And one of those exotic materials is wood. So you can actually 3D print in wood. And uh, I have a Groot. I am Groot. And he has a hole in his head because you can actually put stuff in him. You can use him as a planter if you wanted or whatever. Or put a candle? But, uh, when Guardians... Candle, yeah. I irony. Because it is wood, it will burn. Oh, never mind. Don't do that. Don't put a candle. <laughs> or put like a fake and, like uh, LED candle. That you could do. And Cervantes has one of my stuff, actually. I know. Has he has one of my, my He things. has your Lumiere. Yeah, he, has the, he has the Lumiere that I made, and that has candles in it that light up. Uh, I have the Index from Halo. Okay. Which I'm not done with. Again, it's going to light up, because that's what I like lights. Everyone likes lights. And then I am Star Wars crazy, so I have my Darth Vader that I made and painted. Wait, wait, wait. You made that? Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't design it. I, I 3D Obviously printed it. Obviously, you didn't design I, it that I, I figured, but you 3D printed and it. Then I, I 3D printed it, and then I painted it by hand. Oh, Savantes wants the brain. You want the brain? The brain it was really fun print. It was uh, The brain was my first That's worth 150 The print, that was my first big print, and uh, each half of that 150 Savantes. No, that's definitely worth one hundred and fifty dollars. Because a, you said it changed different oh, colors. I was gonna sell it for two fifty. Oh, okay. Well, it's Savantes. He's special. I was gonna sell it for two fifty because it has Bluetooth, <laughs> it has Wi-Fi, it lights up, it has custom programming, and it has a phone charger in it. Oh, never mind. I I tried. I tried it. I tried it cheap. <laughs> I tried to sell it cheaper. <laughs> that's, that's one of the things where I'm like, yeah, I, I I would never sell that cheap. No, but that's what I'm saying. Mrs. You could invest that. Potts. Oh, where's Chip? Chip is right here. Oh, that's cute. And it could actually be used as an actual teapot. Yeah, this was designed by someone called Chaos Cortec. He's on YouTube as well. Uh, I downloaded his models, and th those those two are his models. And I, Lumiere as well was his model. My advice. Mr. Little Geek is definitely talk to Savantes because he does this, like he creates stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. But that brain, I'm telling you, that brain itself could be a huge oh, investment. I, when I posted the picture of that, I did get a lot of uh, a lot of feedback on that one from a lot of doctors. Were like, dude, I want that for my desk at work. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey. doctors, professors, teachers, especially like it teaches the different parts of the brain. My uh, my I actually I actually was finishing it. I was gonna give it to my psychologist because he really oh, liked it too. Sorry, Savantes, psychologist gets dibs on it. No, no, give it to your psychologist. It's you a three D printed thing though. I can always you can make, make another. another one. And actually, yours will probably come out better because it'll be the second one. No, but I'm I'm trying to say like literally that type of idea with the Bluetooth and that and oh, then yeah. having that's definitely a great mm -hmm. idea to pitch it to like schools and stuff. Oh, and there's your Charmander. Yep. And it lights up. Can you guess what he does? He lights up. Yeah. I um I actually took this model into um Fusion 360, which is the program I use. It's a CAD modeling software. Mm -hmm. And I cut a hole in his in his bottom. Okay. And then uh I custom designed um a 3D printed enclosure for a battery. So you can take a battery and a little coin cell like that goes in the candles. And put it in there. And uh, I, like I said, I don't know if you'll see it or not, but I, I see a little flickering. Yeah, his tail will light up. And then to get the battery, and you're like, well, then how do you get the battery out? And that's part of the design. There's a little hole at the back that you can stick a uh, pin in and push, and it'll have a little lever at the top that pushes the battery up. So that you can get the battery out. You don't have to like use pliers and stuff. 
I also see your shirt, and that's part of your merch, correct? Yes, I. Uh, this is one of my shirts. Only depressed on the days that end in Y, and this is actually an alpha wave from a study of people that uh, were scanned in an MRI, an fMRI for depression. So this is actually a depressed alpha wave from that research paper. Um, and I have some other ones too. I have uh, this one, which is inside out for some reason. Uh, but it says uh, Retopian United on the on the sleeve, and then you get your design on the front. And then on the back, I have my little Geek 88 and a picture of my face. And then I also have this one, which I drew, which is my Rip Gamer. It's also one of my emotes on Twitch. And your favorite, one. favorite one. It is my favorite one. And uh, all these designs I drew on my Twitch channel when I got affiliate, thanks to you and all your lovely community. That's right. I met you when you were not affiliate yet. Mm -hmm. And you came in my stream during a raid with Lepslayer. Correct. And if Lepslayer's it wasn't for a homie. All of the all of your community backing me up, you like pumping me out in your messages and your everything else. I probably would not have hit affiliate. And thank you so much for that. I really appreciate you for that. I'm glad. I'm so glad that I was able to help you. Hi, Rara. Um, uh, we have the sad robot or a robot. Okay. And we have the last one, which is, why are all my shirts backwards? Oh, my mom's oh, here. You have to show that brain again. The brain? Okay, yes. Sure. Hi, Mama Dream. Because literally, she's going to say what I'm going to say to you, that you could pitch it to educators and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Uh, it's, actually it's actually purple and pink pink and purple but, oh never uh, mind she saw the reason, brain she was lurking uh for some reason uh blue the reason i got a blue screen is because my logo is green mm -hmm. so my logo would always disappear and when i wear the rip gamer shirt the whole shirt disappears so i got a blue screen but uh purple is close to blue obviously so uh yeah i'm glad you saw the brain uh, I will, uh, I'll have to post some pictures of it, uh, up and running because I have to finish it. Someone says I'll take the brain uh, for 250 if it can't remind me to brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it probably is good because it does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in it. That's really and neat. Pro the software I installed on there is called WLED. It's an open source software. It runs this lamp that's up here. So, um you can use it and connect it to your phone and uh you can turn it on and off with uh, either siri shortcuts or uh you can do the amazon routines and that could turn it on and off and remind you to brush your teeth so it's completely possible wow yumi says can you really list that item to sell for um the 1300 limit again uh no i cannot Oh. Well, actually, that's not true. I probably could, but I don't want to chance it because after I put it up, um, I was a new store on Etsy that never sold a dang thing ever. Okay. And then I list this, and it sells for thir and I almost try and sell thirteen hundred of them. Uh, that attracted the DMCA people real quick, and I got a ban for like a week on Etsy immediately. Oh, copyright infringement from Fox. Oof. They're like, yeah, that's our product. You can't sell that. But then you go and you type in brain slug on Etsy and you get 50 million listings. It's like, okay. Yeah. You have to be careful with it's Disney too. Disney does the same thing. So it's not the fact that it's copywritten. It's the fact that it's copywritten and I just sold 1,300 of them for $10 a piece. Yeah. If I didn't sell so many of them, they probably would have left me alone. But because it pinged so high so quickly, I'm pretty sure that's why they, they nabbed me for it. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Um, yeah. But the um, brain idea? Genius. Someone says, where can I purchase the brain? Where can you purchase the brain? 
if you were serious about purchasing the brain, like absolutely serious, um, I could probably print you one. And all you'd have to do is send me a message, a DM. Because uh, I don't have a listing for it. So you'd have to send me a DM. So that's a customized thing. Um, um, I have it play my music so I can see my music in waves. Uh, there is a There is a music setting. I can't. There is a music setting because of WLED. Uh, you can put a microphone on super easily and have a music setting. And that was the, you were showing us a ship. What was that? Oh, this is the future. This is the Planet Express ship from Futurama. Oh, okay. And then, oh, speaking of things, uh, for reminding you, who said the reminding thing? That was Bryn, right? No. That was Humble. Humble. Uh, to remind me to do stuff, I made myself something. I made myself a notification thing. I made myself a hypnotoad. It's a frog. It's a hypnotoad. Okay, hypnotoad. What does it do? It, it's from Futurama. What does it do? Um, its eyes light up. So I can control each eye independently, and then it has these beautiful marbles, by the way, that I got out of a soda bottle. I know, it's weird, but that's where I got it from. The Japanese sodas, yeah, they have them. Yeah. Yeah, they have that little marble inside, and they're beautiful marbles, man. They are. They're very scary so, if you swallow those by accident, by really, but yeah. True, true. Um, I have a USB cable right here. If I plug in a USB cable. As you can see, Little Geek should be known as obsessed with light up things. And Futurama, yeah. And Futurama. Okay, so if I plug, I can, uh, he has his controller in the back. Okay. So you just plug him in. And it probably won't do anything right away. But uh, it's a notification device. So it is hooked into my home assistant, which is a whole other story. But um, office. Let's plug him into a battery bank so he's not connected to it. Gadgets of different sizes, yes. I have gadgets for literally everything. Oh, so everybody, there if you want to give a follow to Little Geek, it is pinned on the top of the stream. All right, so we're looking at this frog. I mean, hypnotoad. Mm -hmm. Wait. So it, his eyes will light up eventually. And then uh, you can tell him to do things. So like uh, when he was in my other house, when some when I was streaming, if someone walked by, uh, went to go into my room while I was streaming, his eyes would light up blue and flash. So I knew someone was in the hallway. Um, Monday nights it would flash because is it pack up now? There it goes. It's super bright. Oh my goodness! What it looks so scary. Is it blue uh, lights? Because you can't do the blue lights. Oh, it's red lights now. Well, I, yeah, I'm controlling it from the computer. So I have, like, those are blue, oh. obviously, because it's disappearing. I can do green. You can do purple, pink, magenta, red, anything you want. Uh, you can do white also. That's creepy. That's the whole point. He's a scary, scary toad from Futurama. Like he is, he's called the hypnotoad for a reason. So you see, his oh, eyes are hypnotic. Can you show me the back of the base? Like, are you gonna make like a cover for that? Because you know that's not safe if it gets wet oh, yeah. in water or something. Okay. Well, this is this is my own personal one. It's like yeah. a prototype. I, I have a, I have a what you call it for it. Yeah. Savantis. A, a thing on it. Stop. Savantis is like I love it. Like he wants everything you make. I know. I love it too, Savantis. <laughs> like I, said, I love Futurama anything so but uh, I used him as my notification device he sits here under my monitors it doesn't make noise it just lights up so I can have one eye turn one color and one eye turn a different color uh, like I said I had my cameras in the hallway at my other house if 
if the camera detected motion, it would turn the bl eyes blue and have them flash. So I knew somebody was coming. Um, Cause obviously there's a screen behind me. I can't see what I'm doing. Uh, I have it so that, you know, if someone was at the front door, it would blink red. If there was motion detected, uh, I use it as a notification device. All it does is it lights up. It doesn't make any noise, but um, it sits on my desk and I can still use it for anything I want. I can even use it as a nightlight if I wanted to, because I could just turn the, the eyes on real low, which is kind of creepy, but you can do it. That's really creepy. And um, okay, we are running. We're not running out of time, but we're almost close, getting to the closing time. And I really want to touch the topic of I'm sorry, I'm not showcasing your page or anything, but just talking about the 3D printing was super interesting and everyone was so into it. Mm. But I definitely want to talk about oh. how you are you so tech savvy, but you want to be in, you're into psychology. You don't want to do anything with tech, but you're into psychology. That's true, totally. But um, I originally, in 2007, no, 2008, I went to school for a four year degree in computer electronic engineering technologies, which is such a mouthful. God, come up with a different name for your degree. Wow. But um, CEET is what they shortened it to. Okay. But um, it was computer electronic engineering technologies. It was uh, compute, like motherboard design, circuits, DC, AC, uh programming like all it was a whole thing that encompassed the whole thing and um i went to a school that later would turn out to not be a good school i went to itt tech and um the federal government shut them down so um oh scary yeah yeah they they were doing some very naughty things on the financial side with the financial aid and uh, the this government finally did step in after a giant lawsuit. And um, I don't really have to worry about it because all my loans got d dismissed, thankfully. Oh, but by like, the way, someone just ordered a shirt. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yay, thank you for the support. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, Justina, you ordered a shirt. Thank you. <laughs> I, um... Yeah, so I went to ITT for CEET, and uh, most of my classes I actually tested out of. I think the first year's worth of classes I tested out of. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I paid like $1,000 combined, because every class was like $25 or something like that. I, paid, I wound up paying like $1,000, and I tested out of all of my first year classes. So... Um, if if it was honored, I would have a, an A plus certification already. But um, due to their business practices and all the other stuff, um, they pushed me out. But that forty something thousand dollars was uh, forgiven, thankfully, so I don't have to pay it back. <laughs> Thank you, Savantes. I appreciate it. Uh, it's it's a huge load off of off of your debt. I remember you okay. told I'm me that story. That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't think that they would count it, but luckily they they did. So, but um, I actually went to that school twice. The first time I went for that, and the next time I went for networking. Um, that didn't work out either. And then due to all the stuff that I've had to deal with in my life, I mm -hmm. wound up going to see a psychologist. Okay. And I've been seeing my psychologist for about nine years now. And over that nine years, psychology has helped me understand the world around me. And it's really opened my mind and changed my perspective of the world. And I absolutely love how even though human beings are such chaotic creatures, we can still have some sort of logic to it. And you can put the two pieces together and make things make sense for the most part. So I um, I wound up going to Penn State University. And uh, I'm finishing my associate's degree. Nice. In like six weeks. Everyone say congratulations. So I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, it's not a psychology degree, but uh, it's a psychology-based degree. 
because all of my um all of my classes are mainly psychology, but uh they don't have a, a psychology associates. They only have a multidisciplinary study associates. So I'll have a multidisciplinary uh, uh, multidisciplinary studies associates degree, but it's still an associates degree, so I can still do whatever I want with it, and That's then awesome. I can go from there. Everyone's saying congratulations, um, congratulations on yes, the chat. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate. And it. someone's asking, where do I'm I request so different be over. light stuff you print? Where do I request different light stuff you print, like the stuff that uh, lights up? Like is it DM? Just DM me on uh, Etsy. And also my mom my, was saying uh, if, in 2008, there were many institutions that were closed because of fraudulent actions. The student loans were forgiven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There was a few of them. And it's so unfortunate. They, they, they preyed on students in order to get rich for themselves. It's just so despicable. Yes. So true. Um, with the psychology though, do you know that there's a psych, there is a study of psychology of video games? Would you ever get into that? Yes. Yes, I actually took two video game psychology classes. Oh, sweet. Mm hmm. It's, uh, it, uh, uh, there was, uh, one of them wasn't really psychology, but it, you know, it counted as psychology. Mm hmm. Isn't it? No, it, uh, you mean it is, uh, Retopomar. I'll type it in chat for you. Yeah, type it because I don't know how to spell that. But yeah, there is a video game psychology major thing, which is pretty neat. Uh, so the one that I did was the theory of psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, not theory of psychology, theory of uh, theory of video games, and uh, that one was really interesting because I learned about how they're teaching surgeons now with video games, um, like platform. They're using platformers in order to teach surgeons how to do operations. Yep, they're also doing VR as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they have the uh, robot that they have this surgical robot now. So they got one of the uh, really, one of these like top notch surgeons in London did an operation in London, but the operation took place in, I think it was like Los Angeles, California, or something. My mom's asking and, where in Penn State. She's asking where what? Where did you take the class? Was it in Penn State? Oh, yeah, yeah. All of my, all of my classes I took in Penn State that actually went through. <laughs> Just to say it. That's what she's asking because um, it's a, it's a really yeah, I, interesting uh topic. Um, I didn't take classes on it, but I actually. Can post a link in your chat or no? Yeah, you can post links. I spoke to a um, to a theorist who did the psychology of Zelda at a convention, mm -hmm. and it was really interesting. And um, and well, I played um, Sauna, uh, send you a sacrifice. That's a great game. That focuses on mental that health. That was an awesome, awesome yeah. game. And that was all about mental health. It was fantastic. Schizophrenia and mental health. Mm -hmm. Yep, there you go. There's the link for you, whoever needed the link. That, that is my Etsy store. Uh, like I said, I think it's, this is on my vacation, but um, the reviews are there. You can see some of the stuff that I've printed. You can always send me a DM, though. Someone's asking, would you sell oh. on Amazon? What I I'm not sure. I've never looked into it, but I kind of don't want to like fuel that any more than it already is. I um, like, I feel terrible for the way the workers are treated and all that stuff, but at the same time, I'm so appreciative because. Oh, I Twitch understand. Is, I'm on Twitch. Twitch is owned by Amazon. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> so, it's just like no, it's like well, it's yeah, like you feel second... bad for ourselves, kind of thing. I do kind of, yeah, I kind of do, but it's no, I, I'm really appreciative to Amazon because all the stuff I've shown you tonight is made with parts that I could not get if Amazon did not exist. Okay. Makes sense. Because of where I live in Pennsylvania, we have nothing here. So for me to get the filament for my printer, I need to order it on Amazon for me to get the, uh, electronic, uh, electronic, like little boards that, you, that I use to make all these things work. I need Amazon because it's the only way I'm going to get parts from China that aren't going to take me seven weeks to get. Like if I went on Alibaba or if I went on any of those like uh, warehouse stores online, it would take like two months to get me parts. 
and I can't wait two months. So without Amazon, I wouldn't be able to make the products I make. But it, it's a catch-22 sort of thing. That makes sense. And also, before you got, you wanted to show them the handmade hotkey deck you made. Oh, yeah. Um, everyone always talks about their uh, stream deck, their Elgato stream deck, or Razer has one now, too. I, I don't know if you guys out. that. <laughs> uh hey if that's what you're using that's what you're using i love it okay i used to have I, the small 15 button one and now i have 32 buttons i'm spoiled i don't i don't like the way that it's manufactured and marketed like it's manufactured well i disagree with the way that they market it because the i i don't like marketing speak but um I also have different needs as a as a streamer than other streamers. So for me, a custom solution is better. So I use a program on my computer called Stream Pi, and the Pi is for Raspberry Pi, which is that tiny little computer that uh, you can literally type in, in the internet and find everything that people are making with it. But um, I have a Raspberry Pi 4B, it's called and a seven inch touch screen. And over the last like year and a half, I would say I've been manufacturing my own stream deck. So I will bring up here. This is my stream deck. Uh, I can touch the screen like a normal screen deck. Let me move this up. Yeah, I think that'll be better. Can you guys see that? Yeah, I see it. Okay, so I can do things online. I can uh, I can turn on my Gita cam when I stream, or you know I can do it, and I can do all the other stuff. But the thing that mine does that the other ones don't is that I have these holes here for rotary encoders, which are just little knobs that spin around constantly. Mm -hmm. So I can use them and custom assign them to anything I want. So, like, if I wanted to change the volume of something, I can turn the rotary encoders. I have eight of them. So, I can literally set a whole bunch of different volumes. I could set one to change the vo to change the brightness on a camera if I wanted to. Oh, yeah. So, Elgato actually came up with a stream deck with that idea really recent. Mm -hmm. But it's smaller. Yeah, and they, and they came out with it right after Razer did. Yep. Razer has, uh, Razer has, I think, eight buttons and four knobs. So this one has eight knobs, four, one, four on each side, and then I have 10 buttons at the bottom. But uh, mine doesn't use uh, tactile buttons. My, I have Razer, uh, not Razer, excuse me. I have Cherry MX Browns. Like what the are those? Keyboard ones. Okay. They're the keys in the keyboard. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I bought Cherry MX Browns, and mine is designed around Cherry MX keys. So my my... Uh, files will be available eventually. And um, because they're based on Cherry MX keys, you can pick any flavor of Cherry MX keys you want to put in yours. Oh, wow. So if you want to use browns, you can use browns. If you want to use blues, you can use blues. Mine are browns with the LED edition. So each of my buttons lights up individually with an LED underneath it. So I can actually use it to find a key or adjust uh, the color of something. Uh, like say if I set button one to mute, when I push it, I could have it blink red. So I know that it's muted, have a visual feedback on that. Oh, like my Golex Alar. My... Yeah. Like a mixer, like that. Like a... when you meet, it turns. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, but I could also say that I wanted purple. And okay. have it blink purple because they're all customizable. That's know? cool. No, that's yeah, a so really I can cool idea. Any color I want, and then I also have a seven-inch touchscreen, so I can put as many buttons as I want on there. And I still have software on the computer that I can use to change everything, but um, everything is open source on mine. So it runs on USB-C. Um, it has an extra USB. -C. It has two USB-Cs. One's up here on the side, mm -hmm. and one's up here on one's up here on this side. One's up here on here. Uh, both of them can be used to power the device, but they're also full USB-C ports. 
So you can actually plug in your, your cell phone to it and charge it, or you can plug a USB thumb drive in the side and use it to get files off of it. Because if I close out the software, uh, where's the button? If I actually close, okay, if I actually go out and close this software, or if I just unplugged it, uh, it is a full computer underneath there. Oh, so, so I you have, could actually I have play an games on it? System. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. I can actually play, uh, I'll play a game on it if I wanted to, yeah. So, like, if I, uh, if I unplug it, I'll just show you the beta system. I'm learning so much. Welcome. Welcome oh. to Little Geek. Do, 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 so, you get the, the rainbow screen, as we call it, and then it'll start booting, uh, Debbie and Linux. Oh, okay. It's running on Linux? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it runs Debian Linux, or well, it runs Raspberry Pi OS, which is based on which is based on Debian Linux. So you basically Debian made that, based. or you bought like everything pre-made? Um, I made it. I made it for the most part. Yeah, that's really neat. The oh, case is three D printed. I designed it. Wait, is this so? Is this so, how like like when you go to a store, say for example, like cashiers and stuff? Is this how like cash registers are like made and stuff? uh-huh why yeah uh th this is how kiosks work as well those gigantic billboards that yeah change yeah color the kiosk it, yeah it has a tiny raspberry pi in the back of it the computer's literally this big that runs that gigantic bulletin board why like if you look in the back of it here i'll show you it's just it's just some three D printed nonsense. It's a Raspberry Pi on an LCD screen. I have a custom bracket. Uh, these all all steps so I can put my uh, PCBs in once they arrive. Um, and then these two are so I can adjust the screen brightness. Eventually, I have to do some soldering, but yeah, that's my uh, that's my stream deck. That's what I use when I stream. I love I, that. Uh, I change my scenes with it. I turn my cameras on and off with it. I can send things in Twitch chat. If I hit the chat button, it'll go to a, another screen. Um, yeah, I can do anything I want with it. And like I said, it is a full, like here, that's a, uh, it's a full fledged computer, so I can do anything I want. I love that. So is there anything you want to say to the chat before you go and like talk about what you're gonna be streaming next time when you go live on Twitch? Uh, next time I go live on Twitch will probably be either a design session where I'm gonna uh, be making parts for the dog bowl project that I'm gonna do, which is awesome. Uh, uh, because like I've designed these two parts already, but I still have a lot of stuff I have to design. Feedback is also really cool. If you guys want to give me feedback on stuff and what you think the theme of it should be, like I said, I thought I, I thought I wanted to do like skulls and fountains stuff, but I'm, I'm not sure. My Little Pony. Um, that would be <laughs> that would be freaking so funny. <laughs> My dog wouldn't care, but I think it would be hilarious. I think it would be adorable since she is a female. So. Mm hmm. Yeah, Nikita. My little Nikita. She's my little rescue puppy. No, Savannah, there's not um, schools. Can we see the puppy? Sure. Nikita, are you down here? I'll lure her in with a cheese cracker. Wait, she could eat those? Oh, yeah. She cannot have pork, beef, or chicken, but she can have cheese. Interesting. Nikita, come. But, uh, yeah, she... She is. You want a cookie? Come here. Oh, big doggy! Oh, your oh, stop doing it with your foot. I hate when you do that with your foot. Oh, look here. at her! This is my little Nikita bear. And she's quiet. Like she doesn't bark or anything. She's very, she's very quiet. Um, she's very well behaved. She's a rescue. So Aww. she's had a traumatic life. Um, she was a forceful take, unfortunately. A forceful take? Um, what does that mean? 
Uh, it means that someone in a legal capacity filed paperwork to have her removed from her original home. Oh. So I don't know if they were like beating her or if they were using her in like a puppy mill because she does have the evidence of having multiple litters. Oh. But um, whatever it was, they took her out of the house. <laughs> the police went there or the uh, the ASPCA or the game warden or whoever went. Someone went and they took the dog and put her in a shelter. And then uh, shortly after, I came along and she said, hey, we're going to go home now. And I said, oh, I guess I'm taking you with me. And then Hold they, on. Uh, you know what happens. Hold on. <laughs> Sirens. Thank you for the resub of 11 months 40. Okay, there we go. We could go back to the doggy. No, we'll keep the doggy. Can the doggy speak for us? Hey. Oh, so what is Nik like the name Nikita? Where did you get that name from? Uh, they gave it to her at the shelter and I just kept it. Oh, it's a pretty name. I liked it. Uh, they called her Nikita or Callie. And I said, I don't like Callie. And uh, she didn't like Callie either. Yeah, she just Callie like moved when you said that. She did not like that at all. You don't like the name Callie? <laughs> okay, that's a death stare. Would you like to go back to bed now? I'm sorry. Oh, look at those eyes. Stop it. Oh, my gosh. She's so pretty. Okay. Aww. Go ahead. Go lay back down. I won't bother you again until it's time to cuddle. <laughs> Robert's is such a cutie. Yeah, that dog is really cute. How old? Uh, I think she's four. Four years old? Oh, she's a baby. Yeah, I fostered her for three months because they said that there was something wrong with her leg. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't think so, because she just sprinted across the yard after a deer. <laughs> 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 and they're like, really? I was like, yeah, I don't think she just is happy in this area, like in the shelter. But uh, I had to take her like an hour and a half away to go get her looked at the special veterinarian person. And then they're like, yeah, I don't think she's, I don't think she's hurt. I'm like, yeah, I don't think so either. Because I took a ball and threw it down the hallway and she ran after it. She's like, yeah, she's fine. I was like, cool. I'll, I'll take my dog home now because I couldn't adopt her until I went through this, this uh, special place. So they sent the paperwork and then I went right to the shelter and I said, listen, they cleared her and I want her. So like, she's already part of my family. Aww. So she's not coming back. Robert says my puppy was watching yours when she was on the screen. Oh, really? Oh, that's so cute. That's how I noticed the doggy because BB was Aww. looking. That's so cute. I love that. So you have a dog cam on your stream, I hope, right? I do. I do. Um, okay. I'm probably going to have to move it because her bed's over there now. But um, there is a redeem on my channel called Nikita Cam. And it gets you five minutes of of Nikita on screen. And do you have a treat also for the channel points too? Uh, yeah, we, I give her a treat when you redeem it. I love that. So. You used it, Savantes. My mom says she reminds mm -hmm. me of a puppy our friend rescued. She was very traumatized too. Well, yeah. Little Geek, thank you. Um, before we go, I want to ask you a question. How did you like the experience of the Let's Get to Know unofficial series that I've been doing? Oh, I love this series. I love meeting all of these streamers that you have on here. And, you know, I like I like just learning about all these other things. It's nice to have a different perspective of all the other streamers that are here because everyone has a different stream. You know, we're all doing the same thing, but it's all under dis different circumstances. And so different it's, genres. It's fun to see. And different genres, yes. <laughs> like, uh, you know, some people play one thing and some people play another thing but even two people that play the same game is a totally different stream and to you know peel back that curtain like you are and talk to us individually and stuff that's really cool to see to see the background also we get a lot of more information about the streamer which i'm sure is the point so i mean i'm sure that a lot of the people in your stream today have learned a lot more about me than they probably would in my four hours every time I streamed three days a week. 
Absolutely. Which, you know, I'm happy to, happy to share. I love that. Rara says, share. I had to take that off because now my dog is spoiled with treats because chat kept giving her treats. Will you do the same thing or you, you think you're going to keep it forever? <laughs> uh, mine is limited to five minutes every hour. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. So, uh, and I don't give her a lot of treats. I'll give her like, maybe like, like one, like I said, like one of those crackers, I'll mm -hmm. give her one cracker, but that that's about it. I love that. Well, um, before you go little geek and say, I just want to make a few announcements. Everybody in May, we have two more interviews next week. Monday, we'll be interviewing Sailor X Garnet next week, Friday, even though I don't stream on Fridays, I made an exception for this streamer, um, blockbuster chick. Hopefully things don't change. I'll let her know in the advice. Oh, I don't like this comment. Can someone like block it? Thank you. Um, but anyway, um, thank you so much, Little Geek 88. And then in July, I'll be interviewing lots of other streamers, including um uh, Mortal Paralyte, Midas, uh Lazy Boy. Who else I'm interviewing? Uh Nani live video games it's a whole bunch of people we're gonna meet so little geek how are you gonna close the stream today how am i gonna close the stream today i yeah. don't know what we should do i don't know what what's one message you want to give everybody to like you know leave the stream um hmm, a message for everybody let's yeah. see don't be quick to judgment and always have an open mind i like that don't be quick to judgment. Yeah, don't don't assume anything is what it is. So don't be quick to judge something and have an open mind because everybody is coming from a different perspective and context than you are, even though you're in the same moment. Rara says, yes, exactly. Great words of wisdom. Thanks, Ra Ra. And I can't wait to meet you Sunday. Yes. That's yes. awesome. If, if you if you RSVP'd, I can see all of you on Sunday. No, I'm I'm really NYC. I'm going I'm going with Mama Dream. So me and Mama Dream's gonna be there. So you get to meet well, Mama Dream I'm too. Wow. Yeah, Mama Dream. We're, we're gonna meet Little Geek. He's gonna be at the NYC meetup this Sunday. I will be there. <laughs> That is it for yeah you're gonna meet him on sunday this sunday well thank you so much little geek for your time this was so fun be sure to follow little geek i put the schedule he streams on tuesdays to thursdays 4 p.m to 9 p.m oh that's why you always come here after you finish streaming <laughs> i enjoyed being here too thanks a lot it was my pleasure and thank you for showing me all your 3d goodies and showing your puppy mm -hmm. And hopefully yep, absolutely. in the future, we'll do a part two and see how you're growing as a streamer. And if you actually took my advice in investing your props into like Shark Tank or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely moving forward with a bunch of different stuff now and looking at LLCs and stuff. So I love it. Well, this is it. We're going to end the stream. I'm going to be rating Sailor X Garnet because we're going to be interviewing her Monday. So why not? She's playing some near Automata. Bye, everybody. Oh, 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 oh,